Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Florence, in moderating uh, the session. It is really a privilege and honor for me to be able to share with the participants on um, the career uh, in on engineering in marine field, in particular in Canadian Coast Guard. I trust everyone can see my screen. So I'm going to show you the next slide. The overall way we manage the next around 14 minutes. I have two, two presentations, two deck. And what I would like to achieve is the objective of Hong Hong Chu Zhong Yun is to help you to look at the career in the marine field, in particular on engineering in naval architecture. That is my profession as a trained naval architect. I hope to use a um, high level type of overview of the profession with some personal touch, how I get into the field. And then uh, on this deck, the next five slides is to give you a little bit more detail on the profession. I hope that the overview will be able to stimulate some questions and the subsequent slides in the deck will answer some of your questions, but more important is to generate more questions that we can exchange down the road. And depends on the time, I will show you another deck, which is about 11 slides that talks about at the front line surface of Canadian Coast Guard. Canadian Coast Guard is also a look at the first responder on the marine field. And you will see there are a lot of cool stuff, challenging stuff that it may trigger your interest to look into this profession a little bit more or ask further question. Without further ado, I would just look at the first line. This is really the areas that I think Hong Hong Chuk Jong, your organizer, want us to, uh, to, to explain a little bit. And I think they are very good questions. So I hope that that is going to trigger you a little bit on this profession. Um, I, my name is Nico Pao. I'm currently the director in engineering support in vessel procurement in Canadian Coast Guard. Uh, I study in Hong Kong up to a matriculation that is equivalent to grade 12 and graduate in UK in university called at University of upon, uh, Newcastle upon time in Northeast England with a Bachelor of Science degree on naval architecture in and shipbuilding. Uh, I've got a charter engineer from UK and when I emigrate from Hong Kong to Canada, I got a professional engineer in Canada as well. So these are basically the, uh, the, 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 the minimum qualifications to do that. Uh, I went back to Hong Kong after I graduate and I worked with repair yard, ship repair yard, worked with ship owners for those, the, for the parents, they may have heard of uh, worldwide shipping, Bao Yuk Gong, and also Island Navigation, Dong Ho Wan. Those are the two shipping companies that I work with. And then that leads me to work in uh, field supervision in Japan. And then afterwards, I joined the Hong Kong government doing job that is very similar to what I'm doing now in Canada as a ship surveyor. And altogether, I worked for about nine years before I emigrated to Canada. And we landed in Vancouver. And uh, in a very short period of time, in three weeks, I got an offer and worked in Halifax, because the far east of Canada in Nova Scotia. So I worked in the uh, design firm to do a military vessel design work. And then afterwards, I worked in the shipyard and now it's the Irving shipyard in Halifax. And then when I became a Canadian citizen, I joined the government. So that is my background. So my current job as a, uh, in the Coast Guard, as a director, I do more on the executive level in terms of strategic and policy issue and less on the tactical day-to-day -day operation. But I have the honor and privilege to lead a team of multidiscipline engineers and technologists that including naval architecture, that means design and uh, design ships and build ships, mechanical engineer, marine engineer, electrical and electronic engineer. And then what we do is we do conceptual design. We look at how big is the ship, is, what's the power, what type of emission, because we want to be conscientious on marine po uh, prevention as well. Like reduce the emission of uh, uh, nitric oxide, severe oxide. Uh, we are aiming in according to our government to have net zero by 2050. So those are a lot of challenging environment uh, area. 
So we do our, we work with the operator, which is the Canadian Coast Guard on the operational requirement. We need to know quite a lot of the regulation as well. So the next one on, on my work experience and, and the reflection. Uh, I have done both engineering design work on new ships and, and also on existing ships. And now it's my 42 years in the profession. So I'm retiring end of the month. So the advantage is I may be a little bit gap at the early stage on selecting uh, the, the, the profession, but the advantage is I have a long look on it. So I can give you a bit from that perspective. Uh, on the design side, it, uh, it's a very rewarding type of work because if you're strong on individual, you can specialize on certain area like computer A uh, design, uh, fluid mechanic, fluid dynamic, there are lots of uh, analysis that you can do to be an engineering specialist. And at the same time on the design work, it did a lot of teamwork. So there are a combination of teamwork and individual design work. If you want to go in depth, you can do a lot of detail analysis. There are also research work to do. So in reflection, I find that uh, I have got a lot of satisfaction out of the current job and the past jobs that I've done in the past 42 years. When I get into how to get into the marine field, uh, as I mentioned that uh, I graduated from high school and at that time, I don't really know what I want to do. So uh, I look at uh, in high school, what are the subjects that I like and what are the subjects that I don't like? I know that I'm not good on biology, I'm not good on chemistry, but I can do math and physics. So what I did is I found a lot is the attitude and your, cap and your capability goes hand in hand. And somehow I found that I can do a bit and I like it. So in a rainy day, if there's nothing to do, what I want to look at on the schoolwork. And I find that math and physics are the two. And the second thing I found is who are the people that you hang out with? Somehow I hang out with people who are of like mind, like to do math, like to solve problem on math and physics. So the way we did is we read books and because of the attitude, we look at challenges as real challenge. We don't look at that as obstacles. And I found that type of attitudes helps me when I choose a profession and stay on it. Because as uh, some of the speakers mentioned, perseverance uh, is really important. Your attitude changes a lot on your capability and your motivation. So that is how I found. And then afterwards, then, I can, I like it and I can get the marks. So I got the marks, then uh, eventually uh, I go through the process. So I apply to the university, I get the job. And then afterwards in the university to stay in the degree to get through the system is also challenge. At that time in UK, the university is pretty well known and there were 42 people apply, only 20, uh, 42 people get into the course, only 28 get through it. So what I did is once I, uh, around six months before, before the end of the program, I start to write all over the world. I write to Japan as well, because I don't want to restrict myself to, to Hong Kong or UK, because I did start some summer job in UK as well. And I can, I can get work permit and work in UK. So when you choose your career, once you finish your degree, don't limit to the geographical location like Canada, think of beyond the boundary, beyond the geographical boundary. Unfortunately, I get no response from Japan. I applied to at least 30 some shipyards and design house, but uh, it is very uh, fortunate from my perspective, when I worked with the Hong Kong shipyard, as Hong Kong ship owners, I went back to Japan and on and off, of, I worked in Japan for the Hong Kong ship owner for about uh, six years in a solid period for about two. So that was very helpful for me. So when I go to the next one on minimum requirement uh, is as I mentioned, for engineering profession, you need to have a degree, bachelor degree would be sufficient and a professional engineer. And for vocational job that I will show you a little bit later on, on the Coast Guard College, you need marine qualification like uh, Coast Guard College, or in Ontario Georgian College, in BC, at BC Institute of Technology, 
uh, uh, Newfoundland, they have the marine. So, so those are not degree course, but vocational, very hands-on. You get a lot of satisfaction. If you like to get your hands dirty, that means if in the summertime, you like to fix your house, help your parents to do that. This is also type, type of job that are very uh, appropriate for you too. Now, what is the prospect of this field as a career? Right now, since 2012, when the government of Canada announced the, the National Shipbuilding Program, there are a lot of money injected in the industry, especially now built in Canada, made in Canada. That makes the career of marine shipbuilding, ship design, reasonably good. Uh, for the government, uh, for the Canadian Coast Guard fleet, which is a civilian fleet, we got right now up to about 44 billion to, uh, to, to replace the existing ships and also to do some what we call midlife extension for the existing vessel because the vessel is very old. So Coast Guard 3, we have 40 large vessels and around 80 small vessels. And for the next 10 years from now to 2030, there will be a lot of design and construction and the construction program goes beyond 2040. So after 20 years, then there will be another sort of replacing the, the fit the fleet that was delivered in the last few years. So it is quite a good career in terms of the future. And then um, the career span is like any engineering. If you focus on design, it will be uh, only the design, uh, it, it will be short-lifted. But if you're in the construction production side, it will be a lot longer on production engineering and project management with a strong engineering understanding. And once you get into the field, then it's up to you. That's why early on, a uh, speaker mentioned about passion, uh, things that you want to improve. And from my experience, it's your attitude because roadblocks is no longer roadblocks. Roadblocks become your challenge. And roadblocks is the good way to overcome it. So, so it really changes on that. And the industry will be strong the way we see for the next 20 years or so. And if you join a government uh, department like Canadian Coast Guard, you will have a career until your retirement that is 35 years and plus. So, so in terms of the stability of your career, it is going to be strong. And next year, Coast Guard is going to celebrate 60 year anniversary. And I'm sure there will be another 60s and beyond. So it is quite good. What inspired me uh, to get into the field? Uh, I found that is. My elder brother is a, uh, is a ship captain. He shared with me the advantages of going all over the world. And marine is an international profession. So it's a small field, but the field people know each other, both in Canada and in the world. Though. So Hong Hong Chuk Jong Yun, this is one of the areas that you can make yourself known in the international world. So this is the, uh, the overall view. Now I'm giving you more facts. Uh, in terms of the profession in Coast Guard. Now, this is the engineer, engineering career in Coast Guard. There are shore base and sea base. The shore base is where I am on. And you, if you look at the pointer, I put project engineer. There are different disciplines though. And we do conceptual design. We do a lot of technical, uh, uh, technical evaluation, technical investigation, and life cycle management because we keep the vessel some of them are 40 years old. So there's a long career for people who work on new vessels with that background, you move to do repair and existing and modification work. Now there's another big area of the career that you can look at. It's the seagoing position that they are marine engineer. That means you operate the ships, you operate the vessels. And I, I'm going to show you later on a bit more. What are the type of uh, uh, operation that we do? The education, project engineer, you need a degree. Marine engineer, you need certification. And there's uh, a, uh, a link to the college. And this that I'm going to send to the organizers so uh, they will put it in the website. So, so those information will be there for you. Now, this is a practical aspect of the salary. If you look at for project engineer, Eng2 is people who finish the graduate from university. The entry level is around 71,000 up to 81,000. Usually one and a half years, depends on the performance, they will be promoted to the Eng3. And then in around three years or so, they will be promoted to Eng4. 
and the top level for Ange 4 is, is over 100,000. And for the seagoing uh, officers, both engineer and tech officers starting with almost 70,000. And then a lot of the people will end up with uh, over, over 100,000. Job opportunity for students on the apps web, the Federal uh, Student Work Employment uh, Program. Now that one is for people who didn't go to a co-op student program in engineering, and they only have the summer to look for summer jobs. And that is the program, and the link is in the bottom. And that is, you can apply it to, uh, to the federal government uh, department, and then you may be able to, to, to get selected. Now, this is the deck that I want to, uh, to share on the engineering. Now, I'm going to stop sharing. I put on another deck that is on the uh, Coast Guard work. So, can people see my screen? No. No, okay. Then I think I better try again. Okay. Uh, bear with me. Uh, is it working now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I will only show half of the deck because I think the work that Coast Guard do is very interesting. Surf on the front line of the water, can, Canada, Canada's waterway. You see, this is a rip. The speed is very fast because we do search and rescue. So every minute count, very much like the ambulance, but this is the ambulance on the water. Now, this is the type of work that, that we do, help to grow the economy. You see this one? This one is a combination of icebreaker and a different handling of the, of the buoy as well. And we do science work, keep the waterway safe. And this is the police and uh, we work with the police as well. And then uh, on the bottom uh, environment, you see sometimes, especially in the West Coast, is oh, there's pollution that is on the water. And we are the first responder to, to limit the damage of the oil. And I know at one time in Vancouver, there was a very high profile vessel. So high profile issue, and that is what we do on that. Marine search and rescue. And you see how uh, this is the boat, and the boats are very fast, 30, uh, 25 knots. Some of those are 35 knots because we want to reach to the person as fast as we can. And as a, as a neighbor, these vessels, uh, because they are very small, you need to be fast. So when they go to a wave, maybe 20 feet high, the whole vessel can be flipped over, 360 degree turn over, but it will go back upside down though. So when the, when, when the thing can overturn and come back up, uh, right side up. Though. So those are the design, that is the engineering challenge that we I feel very good work. And that is a challenge for young people like yourself uh, could, could look into that as well. Ace to navigation. You know that when you cross the road, there's line between there, double line between the, the one go to one direction and the other. On the water, these are the lights, the red and green to differentiate that. But in the winter time, they are ice. So we need to take them and do repair work. And we do, we do design vessels to do that. And you see on the top and uh, left-hand corner, this is the air cushion vehicle. That means they can work on the land. They can also work on the sea. And it's very good for ice uh, management as well. Ice breaking. Uh, Canada is one of the eight Arctic country. And ice breaking is uh, one of the area. And you see the, the one alphabet, the one on the, on the top screen, they are uh, operating in the, uh, in the Montreal area, in the St. Lawrence River, the, the, uh, the, the Gulf. And then this is uh, Terry Fox, which is one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, large icebreaker. And I, I think it's winter, so people were, uh, I think in the, in the Santa Cross, I think it's just for the, for the photo op on that. But uh, that one is really good. And then because the ice is, is all frozen, and so they can actually walk on the surface. They do a lot of science work uh, apart from ice breaking. And they do a lot of what well, because summer supply to the Inuit up to the north. 
So we also attract uh, some of the innovate uh, to, to, to work on the vessel store. Environmental response, you see those booms on those, and we design vessels to do that. And there's, uh, there's plane that is run by Transport Canada. And you see sometimes these are not what you would do. We usually get contracted to, to do the uh, recovering of the oil and the animal that are affected by them. So marine security, we work worldwide. We work very close with US Coast Guard. We work very close with the Navy and the Navy is in the command center and we do a lot of supply work with them. And we also work with the provincial po police like OPP on the Marine Police. We have a lot of communication with them to look at security. Say for instance, whenever there is a G7 meeting in Canada, then when it is near the waterfront, Canadian Coast Guard and the Navy will be alongside. And the way we assess our success is if there's no news on Canadian Coast Guard, then we are successful. So, so the anonymous are the hero as well too. Support on scientific research work. We support the Department of Fisheries and Ocean, which is where we belong. We also Natural Resource Canada. There are a lot of Arctic science, university science program on on the quality of the water, on the health of the habitat of the fish. So we do a lot and some of them, we have a, a year and a half to do the, uh, the science program up north. Though. So they are very interested. And working with Coast Guard, you go along with them, but you don't go for the one and a half year. You only go there for 14 days or 18 days, uh, 28 days, and you shift, shift on that. Uh, support conservation and, pro and protection. Um, this is where we talk about, we heard about lobster. Uh, there's a certain issue on when is the season to do lobster and how to be on the water to, pro uh, to, to protect the resources and make sure that all the lobster vessels will get to quota. Same for fish. And we work with the, what we call conservation and protection officer. They will work on our vessels and we will help with them. So those are really doing a lot of work on the environment, on the resource security and safety for uh, the Canadian. Marine communication and traffic services. Probably yesterday was the 20th anniversary of the September 11. And you may see the air traffic controller from Gander. They say 38 uh, planes go to Gander. In the marine side, we have the marine communication and traffic services. And this is where you see here is they are also uh, communicating to each of the vessels. Their system to identify their location, their speed, and make sure that they are, they are on the right path and then there's no uh, marine navigation um, uh, hex, uh, 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 accidents that, or, or a hazard in, in that sense though. So these are the two areas that I want to share with you on the engineering side and on shore that I'm more familiar with, but also to give you um, an understanding of the type of work uh, that Coast Guard serve the Canadian and the rest of the deck there are some on the Canadian Coast Guard College that is in uh, Sydney, Nova Scotia and that train the, uh, the people both on the deck of them is the navigation side and the marine engineers and also the marine communication and traffic services and that is more on the electronic side. So on the engineering there's a gamma of different disciplines that uh, we can sort of uh, so put your interest if you're interested on engineering or technologies. So now I think I'm just on time at 327. So I would open for questions now. I'm going to stop sharing. Yeah, thanks everybody and thanks Nico for the very interesting presentation. You know, I don't have any engineering background, but I also enjoy your presentation because I had no idea you know, about the works of a marine engineer. Yeah, so uh, I look forward to any questions from the participants. As mentioned, you are welcome to raise your hand, ask the question uh, verbally or um, write the question in the chat room. Mm -hmm. 
quiet, cricket. <laughs> or it is the industry too too technical, and you you don't know what you don't even know what to ask. <laughs> Whatever in your mind, just just share with me and with us. I mean, sometimes your question is 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 other people's question too. Yeah. I, I, I think I hear someone speaking, but I'm not sure if he or she is asking Nicole a uh, question. I didn't hear any question or, or chat, right? Not yet. Okay, while we, we wait for a participant to ask a question, I'm actually interested in asking the participants a question. Where where do you guys come from? Like, are you like studying in engineering school or still in the high school or working already? Or why are you yeah, interested in this uh, engineering talk? Oh. oh, it's still it's still quiet. <laughs> Okay, uh, Adrian asked a question in the chat room. Oh, he would like to know if there are any opportunities to go into the field, starting with uh, volunteering. Because uh, um, I think he understands that uh, to, to get the very first job, other yeah. than uh, yeah, traditional means like uh, application on website, you also have to do networking or volunteering. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, understand. Yeah, I understand that is the inshore uh, rescue craft program that you can apply, and they do accept high school students though. So what I could do is, uh, I could give the link to the organizer after the meeting, and then what I could show uh, another area is I do have a pamphlet regarding the trade and all this, and you can if you are interested on that. Uh, if you leave the information to the organizer, I can send the information to the organizer, then they can provide. There's the inshore, uh, 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 inshore rescue boat, a uh, fast rescue craft program that people can work with. But most of the time, uh, uh, we are looking for people of different, uh, different ethnic background or different part of the, of the uh, Canada. We are very looking forward to get people. So, we actually pay you. You don't need to do warranty work in that sense though. But I think uh, a lot of the work are on shift so that you can look at it and see whether it works with your uh, school program. Though. Yeah. I hope that answers your questions. I hope that answers Adrian's question. Mm, so okay. What else? Now, in the Coast Guard College, uh, the one in Sydney, Nova Scotia, when you join them from high school, uh, they actually start to pay you though, because then that counts as your year of service. So while you are studying, you get paid, you get uniform, you got, you got accommodation, you got paid. So, and then at the end of, I think, three to four, four years, then you almost guaranteed to get a job to work on the Coast Guard fleet. And then once you are, Gaining experience, then you know where you want to develop your career on the marine field, within Coast Guard, within government, or in the industry too. Yeah. No, actually, I do have a question. I'm curious to know how this industry of or this kind of work looks um, since the COVID outbreak up to now. Yeah. Now, uh, for the first uh, responder, the people working on the ships, 
they are essential worker. That means essential worker in terms of the safety of the of the industry, and also uh, we do search and rescue if there's any like like over the the, the weekend with uh, with Larry Hurricane Larry then. Our Coast Guard uh, people will have to stand by uh, at the St. John area. So, so we uh, the way we do is uh, during COVID, the people who work on the ships, they they still have to work uh, on the ships, but with all the safety procedures in terms of mass social distancing and also all the uh, different gangs and sanitizers. And so those are being respected, well respected, so as to make sure the safety of the people uh, is there. For people like ourselves, we just work remotely from home. And uh, so we have been working reasonably well for those who are so-called non-essential worker. We all work from home, though. yeah. So that is how, so it doesn't stop uh, the progress. Uh, the, the business is still ongoing it is challengeable for the employee and for the employer to make sure we are productive. Yeah. Now, any volunteer uh, opportunity in Toronto, we don't have an office in Toronto. The nearest one is in Sanya. So I, I'm not sure that we do have an, uh, a, a volunteer opportunity in Toronto. So uh, I would say, no, but I would I would certainly check it again because the nearest thing is Sanya block me. We do have a Coast Guard. Whenever there's a Coast Guard base, there's some chance on doing uh, the, 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 the warranty work. But I think the inshore uh, uh, rescue craft program, they are in the Great Lake. So uh, you are in the Lake Ontario. So I would check on that. But offhand, I don't think so. But I need to, to, to confirm and check back with you. Any other questions? Okay, uh, I think this uh, breakout session will be over soon. And uh, if there are no other questions, I have one more, which is, uh, I mean, that the path to get into this field, this industry, is there just a one single path or other paths as well? For example, if uh, someone like had a, a, tip, a, a regular mechanical engineering degree yeah. in Toronto, yeah. can he or she still get into this field uh, through other ways? Yes, uh, in fact, uh, well, I am a director of the entry support, so I do look after hiring and, and recruitment. In fact, uh, just two months ago, we do recruit uh, someone from, uh, from Toronto, and he is a mechanical engineer. So we did give the off, and we have more and more recruiting a new immigrant. And uh, in fact, the last five or six are uh, all uh, visible minorities, so we are very fortunate, or female uh, engineers. A number of them, uh, we recruited from, uh, at least two from, uh, from Toronto. We have one recruit from uh, Montreal. They are not marine field. They are just good mechanical engineers. And what we have done is because we have started the program on replacing the fleet for since 2012, so around 10 years now, because we, we, we did sort of, 2009 or so. So we are, we are large enough. We have a group of over 20 engineers now. The team is 25, 26, and we are big enough to, to uh, absorb people who are not marine field. And in fact, there's not many marine field uh, professionals in the, in the industry. So we have been sort of attracting people who are good engineers but they're not in the marine field and they can get into that. And after five or 10 years, they are very good engineers in the field on ship design and ship building. So that is a little bit of sort of changing the profession, but still within engineering. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, and that that has happened before. Yeah. Well, this is a very helpful information. 